So we're on our second day in this new theme to follow Christ in 2 Corinthians as we see it expressed so wonderfully through Paul. It is a generous life, a giving life, but it's also a glorifying life. And that's where we want to look at again today this theme of yesterday we talked about that glorious transformation that can happen, that God receives glory for, for how he works out his glory uh, in our own lives. But now he's saying something else about glory and really just a, a warning about that as well. So I want to encourage you again, several of you have been wonderful to, to like certain comments or videos, but also in the comment section, if there's an insight that you have or a question that you have, please put it in the comment section so we can see that. This past Sunday, we looked at verse 19. And, and even though this gift, and we'll talk more about this church soon, but even though this gift is for Jerusalem, for people who are in desperate need of help, they're, they're impoverished, right? They have, they have very little money, but there's, there's some other things going on as well. Uh, not only are they in that, and, and you say, okay, well, the gift's for that, but I love how Paul clarifies things. He says in verse 19, this gift really, it's for, and I'll read his words, for the glory of the Lord himself. So yes, it's for others, but at the heart of it, as we said Sunday, everything we have, every relationship we have, ultimately, if they're given by the gift giver, they are for his glory. All gifts need to be returned to the gift giver for his glory. Whatever talent, whatever gift, whatever resource, whatever friend, whatever relationship, whatever work, all of that is to be given back to the gift giver for his glory glory. And this is a wonderful thing, though, that our giving, when we give out of our prosperity, we talked about Second uh, 1 Corinthians 16, 2, as we prosper, we give a portion of that to the Lord, and that even gets wrapped up in his glory. I was trying to help some people in Jerusalem, some brothers and sisters. Well, it's even got this deeper work, and that it brings glory to God. And you see that throughout Paul's. We've said Sunday, I think it's the third or fourth most book that has uh, uh, the uses of the word glory in it. So it says much to us about how we can get wrapped up in God's glory. And we'll even talk later, I hope, uh, about how we can cause others uh, to glory in the Lord. Now, Paul has some, a warning for us today. So this is devotional, but it's, it's, a, it's, a tough, it's a tough devotional because it's a reminder and a warning. You get to chapter 12, 20, when he kind of gives that one of those laundry lists of things that we are not to be about. And he, he rattles off several things. Two of those words there in the Greek, one early on, like the third or fourth word used there in verse 20 of chapter 12, is selfishness. Don't be selfish. I think another word he uses there is disputes. Don't just, it's all about me and my way. Uh, and don't be wrapped up in that. But then later you get one to, to one of the last words that he uses there, and it says there's no room for arrogance. There's no room for pride, where I get the spotlight, where I put myself over others. Now, listen, that, that certainly speaks to the culture around us and to a common temptation for most of us, this self-glory. We said it Sunday, where we, we work hard so we can shine. We acquire things so we can shine. We push our kids and our grandkids so we can shine. This idea of self-glorification, which again, if you read Paul and the word glories all over the place, it's not for us, it's for the Lord. So that's a no-no, no self-glory. But there's something else going on here in this, and it's about self-will. We didn't have time to talk about that Sunday. And so I wanted to spend just a few minutes today. Not only does Paul jump on that, we'll come back to it in a minute, but so does John Wesley, so much so that once again, he brings in his mama. You know it's serious when you got to go and get Mama Wesley and bring her in to make the case. And he's talking about child rearing, but it's a word for all of us. When she reports this, the grand impediment to temporal and eternal happiness is self-will. Pushing for, fighting for my will is the grand impediment eternal and, right now, temporal happiness. E. Stanley Jones was a famous Methodist missionary who was faithful to take the gospel overseas, and he said this, the center of all spiritual and moral difficulties is the lack of self-surrender. 
that as Jesus would say, you want to find your life, you lose it. You just give it away. I died to self. The center of all moral difficulties, as well as spiritual issues, is really, I just can't let go of myself. It's all about self-will and self-glory. We've been reading in our Bible reading plan, we've been in the Gospel of Luke. And, uh, but for the Psalms, we finally got to Psalm 132 last Saturday. And it's interesting how that Psalm reads. In the New American Standard, it says, Lord, would you remember David's affliction? That's a good thing to pray. But if you read the NIV and other translations, it's an interesting way that they translate it. Lord, remember David's self-denial. Actually, when David gets in trouble is when he doesn't deny himself. But there's so many instances of where he does that well. He denies himself. Lord, would you remember that? That's not our culture. You know, we, uh, sadly, it's not even Christian culture and what we teach about, about happiness. That's why I brought up the E. Stanley Jones quote. People made fun of this person. One of the large churches uh, in the country had somebody on their platform, one of their pastors, stand up and say it two or three years ago. And it's not my intention to make fun of this, but just to, as a critique of this is where we are, even in church culture, not just in the world. But this person said, do good for your own self. Not for the Lord God himself that, that Paul said here in verse 19. But do good for your own self. Do good because want, God wants you to be happy. When you worship or go to church, you're not really doing it for God. Not really. You're doing it for yourself. Paul is clear. It's not about me. It's not about self-will. It's not about self-glory. Um, being conceited, prideful, exalting himself, could that have been an issue for Paul? You read 2 Corinthians, and he thinks so. You read chapter 12. We forget about the thorn in the flesh. We say, yeah, he, he prayed that God would remove it, and God didn't. Why was it given to him? Why did Paul sense and know that God had put this in his life? I mean, he biblically, like Jesus, he prayed three times, and when the answer wasn't there, Jesus resigned himself to the Father's will. I resigned myself to the Father's will. It's a perfect matching of Jesus's life and surrendering to the will of God. But why is it there? You read chapter 12, and what does it say? God gave me this thorn because potential of conceit. A thorn in my flesh was given to me to keep me from exalting myself. Wesley's clear. You fight self-will and you fight any glory grabbing. Paul senses it even in his own self and, and is, is open about that here in chapter 12. This world tells you, you just grab what you can. You stand up for yourself. You, you, you make your way known. And uh, Paul, who had all these strengths, doesn't do that. Wesley, who had all these strengths, doesn't do that. Jesus Christ, his greatest moment, says, not my will, but yours be done. What's your next step? What's my next step? Next step in faithfulness in terms of giving, in terms of making sure every relationships, whatever those are, friendships, marriage, parenting, work, fun, how can God receive glory from them? because he is the gift giver. Just as this gift is being given to the Jerusalem church, Lord, ultimately it's for you. That's the question for us then. What's my next step so that I am not getting glory, but that what I'm doing is turning people's attention, turning people's eyes to God, the gift giver who gave us those gifts. Let's pray about that. Father, we thank you and praise you that you're a good father, father who gives good gifts to his children. And as we see Paul be very real and very open about some weakness in his life, that he could potentially become puffed up, uh, he, could, he could seek his own will. Father, we pray for ourselves you would guard ourselves from that, that we would guard ourselves in a world that tells us, affirms to us, pushes us to glorify ourselves, to say to the world, look at me. Help us by your word and by your Holy Spirit to see those places in our lives where we are 
defending ourselves, where we're glorifying ourselves, where we're pushing our own agenda, where we're, where we're seeking attention. And may you get the glory. May you correct us, guide us, help us in our repentance, help us in our intentional discipleship in every relationship that we have so that every good gift we receive from you, every good relationship, every good work uh, would be directed to your glory for it is for the Lord God himself. We pray all these things for your glory and in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow.